A competition of diligent girls is more than just an occupation. It is perhaps represented by feelings and resolutions. It is a mixture of exquisite ethics, high moral, and the best taste. All of the aforestate is embodied in the notion of Orasta Kizla, or diligent girls. Diligent girls go along with Uzbekistan's good traditions, where the status of the lady is particularly high. While in Uzbekistan, one can be convinced in attending the Republican Forum of the Most Diligent Girls of Mahala. For the diligent competition, the most talented girls of the country, the winners of the regional contests in Karakal, Pakistan, provinces and Tashkent City are invited to the event jointly, organized by the Women's Committee of Uzbekistan and a number of partner organizations. The overall aim of it is to bring up female students in the spirit of commitment to the ideas of the national independence, preservation of their minds from the influence of information threats and leading healthy, active lifestyle. The idea to have this forum collectively started in 2011, when competition of such kind was held individually in colleges, lyceums and all the gatherings of Mahala. It was hard for the jury to select the best ones. However, according to the rules of the contest, the winners have to be chosen. Visitors at a Tori no Ichi Fair in Naka City, Ibaraki Prefecture buy decorated bamboo rakes for good luck. The fair is held at the Shinto Shrine in November, one of the days of the Toryo Rooster in the Chinese calendar. Open-air stalls sell kumade, decorated rakes, symbolic of raking in good health and fortune. Those who buy are given a ceremonial rousing cheer with hand clapping. A woman visiting the fair said she wants to buy a larger rake than the one she bought last year. A man said the one he bought last year was effective. He said he is going to buy another one just like it. It's a delightful paradox when flaws are perfection, and that's the achievement of Chinese porcelain that inspired a French ceramic artist. Twenty of her pieces have come to Shanghai and are now on display at the Liu Li China Museum. At first glance, the influence of traditional Chinese art is easy to spot in Christine Faber's ceramics. She said her inspiration came 30 years ago when she visited a Paris museum and saw a piece of a Song Dynasty ceramic. Christine Faber, a French artist, said it is just a vessel with no decoration, but only cracks that had formed with time. She thinks it is the most beautiful decoration on the vessel. Faber began to focus on the cracks in her work and also to explore the techniques creating this effect. Almost all of Christine's works use the crackled glaze, which she says has a meaning. She added, you can see there are a lot of cracks on it, just like the world we are living in now. There are many problems on our planet, but the sphere is still standing up. A sphere can also represent a meaning of humanity. Of course, this sphere can neither hold a child nor feed life now. Christian Faber hoped we could do more in the future to put our wisdom and wealth into this sphere. Faber's works are not just an imitation of Chinese porcelain, as she also uses bronze, wood and glass in her works. She has also taken inspiration from other cultures. Chang Yi, curator, said when he first saw these ceramics, he found the works were big in size, as if the artist was not satisfied if it was small, and as if she were making a whole universe as her work. By the contrast between her work and the size of our body, we can see she is challenging the infinity of a material, and she is showing you all her reflection. Chang Yi said he can feel what Faber wants to tell through every touch on her work. The exhibition runs until January 6, 2016, and admission is 20 yuan. U.S. Flyers recently won the landing accuracy race of the Wings for Love 2015 World Cup, beating eight teams from 12 countries in the world. The contest was hosted by aircraft owners 
and Pilots Association in Zhaodong, southwest China's Yunnan province. The landing accuracy race is designed to measure the accuracy of the landing point of the competitors. The closer the landing to the fixed point, the higher the scores of the contestants. The house team's girl tails, led by the only female leader, Alan Brennan, from the United States, was the last one to compete in the race. With blue wingsuits and amazing jump, the team took the scene atmosphere to the climax. After a tense afternoon, the house team squirrel tails won the landing accuracy race. A number of migratory birds from European countries can be seen these days at the Kawudula National Wildlife Park in Sri Lanka. The winter season in European countries begins in the month of August. With that, these birds migrate to tropical countries. The Kawudula National Wildlife Park is 6,900 hectares in size. Since two-thirds is covered in water, it is a very suitable environment for birds. Migratory birds build nests in Sri Lanka and lay eggs, and some of these birds live in this country. The Ithers migrate to Europe at the end of the winter season, according to the Wildlife Department veterinarian Dr. Pramudita Dewa Surendra. The International Round Table on Greyhounds was held in Macau, bringing together Macau Society for Animal Protection and 10 organizations from the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, the, the mainland and Taiwan. Macau, it's all these Their topics included the end of Macau's conundrum and the future the of its greyhounds. Executive. The main conclusion regarding Macau, it's all these 10 friends of animal recommended to the chief executive to not to renew the concession contract of the Canidum when it expires at the end of this year. This is truly an historic moment. For the first time, animal protection groups from across the globe have joined together to oppose the cruelty of dog racing. However, who felt the biggest hit in the issue was Australia. It's very important though we felt uh, to be here to tell the Macau community that all of the dogs that are at the Canadrome all come from Australia. They have raced in Australia and have not performed as well as their owners might like and so they are exported here. They live a very difficult life and uh, we want to play a part in giving them a, a better future. We have also travelled here for another important reason, and that is to provide information to the Macau government and the people of Macau as to why it should consider severing all ties with the Australian greyhound industry. Australia's These animal protection associations submitted to the Macau authorities an online petition that hopes to bring an end to the conundrum. To but what happens to the greyhounds still competing in Macau if the government goes through with this? Promoters of the online petition say there are two options, to build a facility to receive the dogs or to send them to Portugal. According to the president of the Macau Society for Animal Protection, there are many people interested in adopting them. And Christine Dorchek of Grey to K says that there are many organizations in the U.S. that are ready to receive the greyhounds as soon as they are rescued. Baklava is a traditional and authentic Turkish dessert. It is especially being made on religious holidays to serve the guests. Turkish baklava is sweetened with sorbet, a light syrup made from sugar, water and lemon juice. This makes Turkish baklava much lighter and crispier than any other style varieties. In every Turkish pastry shop, supermarket and household, you'll find endless varieties of baklava made with walnuts, hazelnuts, pistachios and more all in shapes and sizes you'd never dream of. Squares, diamonds, rolls and spirals. The most coveted baklava of them all is pistachio baklava, made with bright green raw pistachio nuts. 
If you wish, you can substitute the pistachios with ground walnuts or hazelnuts for a more economical version of this recipe. Researchers at a local university have developed the technology they say could revolutionize industrialized training and put state-of-the-art virtual reality technology to good use. Joystick 3D glasses and a huge projection. You could be forgiven for thinking this is the latest video gaming device. But in fact, this is how logistical and industrial training may look like in the future. Researchers at the University of Hong Kong spent 10 years developing this system that can generate expensive virtual environments for human interaction. Large machines like cranes and even a whole airport terminal can be fitted within a small room. And because the virtual worlds are computer generated, they can be exchanged and adapted according to different training needs. Training scenarios that may not be possible in the real world can also be simulated. We are using uh, the very current, uh, very cost-effective off-the-shelf equipment to form a very you know, mobile, deployable, uh, integrated systems. The researchers have also developed novel ways for users to interact between the physical and virtual worlds through the system. For example, one can write on this tablet computer and then transfer the text into virtual reality. The research team says these features can be used in areas other than industrial training, such as education and even physical rehabilitation. The system has already been used by an airline and the Hong Kong police force for training. The team hopes to collaborate with more organizations in the future and use the technology in more areas. Colorful lanterns light up a backdrop of a clear stream on a serene autumn evening. A Joseon era painting of the sun and moon is reborn with LED lights. It is the folding screen that has set up behind the king during the Joseon dynasty containing prayers for peace and prosperity. A miniature of Kwangjiang Market, the first permanent market in Seoul, is also recreated here with beautiful lights. Pororo and Larva, they are favorite characters among children and they too have been decorated with bright lights. Park Su Yang from Yongdyungpo District, Seoul, said she was impressed by the beautiful LED depiction of the Bukchon Hanok village. Soft lights shining through thin traditional hanji paper add a romantic mood on an autumn night. Wish lanterns are hung on the sides of Wangkyo Bridge and set drifting away along the stream. The theme of this year's festival is an illuminated tour of Seoul. The 2015 Seoul Lantern showcased over 600 works on display along 1.2 kilometers of the Cheonggi stream. Thank you.